Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we'll have a look at the latest from the live radar. We'll go through the GFS, the GM, the E7DF and the GFS ensembles along with the UK Melt of run as well. And we'll also have a brief look at the NAO and AO indexes uh, which we have done before uh, and if you haven't seen those before I'll explain it briefly when we do get there. It is looking like we're going to be having a lot of high pressure around over the next week or two. It even does look like we will be seeing some northern blocking as well, which is again an encouraging sign for a colder winter. But at this stage, being the middle of October, it's just going to give us dry, um, pleasant days, but potentially some chilly nights as well. So do remember, if you enjoyed my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And do remember to follow on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. So do have a look at the latest radar, you can see that conveyor belt of moisture is still moving in from the southwest. However, it's not been anywhere near as significant as initially anticipated, and the yellow warnings that were issued for Scotland have now been retracted uh, and no longer in force for today and for tomorrow morning. But we still do have some heavy rain spreading into Western Ireland, parts of North and Ireland as well, and into Western Scotland, and it will continue over the coming hours and slowly spread eastwards into tomorrow. If we do have a look at the GFS, uh, see what's going to happen, you can see those weather fronts are going to try and push in. However, coming up against this big high pressure spanning in from Scandinavia and Central Europe, it is going to sort of peter away. And then we see high pressure reinforcements from the middle of the Atlantic by early next week, and it turns the wind into a bit of a northerly. Now, the next few days, we could see decent temperatures, and we have had seen decent temperatures today in some areas in the south, maybe 20, 21 degrees. However, with the cooler airflow coming in from the north by next week, we could have some chillier temperatures around, especially by night, temperatures could be falling into single digits, pretty much anywhere, with a bit of a northerly airflow. Beyond that, high pressure does stick around, and you can see we do have northern blocking up towards Greenland, towards Iceland as well, and it's giving us a bit of a muddled picture with real big applications in the jet stream. On this latest GFS, though, we're still under high pressure, and it keeps sort of building back, um, and by sort of 240 hours, we do have a bit of a southerly airflow. Now, it's not really hot, so I wouldn't say Indian summer pattern by any means, but still could give temperatures into the high teens, maybe even 20 degrees with those warmer upper air temperatures wafting up. Into the longer term, we maintain high pressure around, um, and we still um, have a bit of a, a shifted jet stream. And right towards the end of the run, we do see ridging, up towards the Arctic, very interesting patterns sort of setting up with big amplification and potentially some cooler air starting to move in for the end of October. So yeah, very interesting to see from the latest GFS, a lot of amplification, a lot of high pressure around, again, encouraging signs for the winter, but for now, it's just going to be fairly decent days when in October um, we can get a lot of very, very stormy, unsettled weather. And we've had seen us haste that over the last few weeks. But as it does look like in the next week to 10 days at least, it's going to be reasonably dry um, and pretty pleasant, at least in the day. Now, if we do go through the NAO and AO indexes. Now, many of you have probably seen this before. Some of you may have not. Um, so I'll briefly explain uh, what they are. So the NAO and the AO are indexes that reflect how strong the high and low pressure are um, in the North Atlantic and the Arctic. So for the NAO, if we have a negative NAO, the pressure is higher in the North Atlantic than we would expect. Um, and if we do have a positive NAO, it is more likely low pressure is in the North Atlantic. So generally, for sort of colder, blocked conditions, we would want a negative NAO, and that's what we're seeing at the moment, and that's symbolic of what we saw on those pressure charts, with a lot of high pressure in the Central Atlantic area heading up towards the UK. And that pattern is continuing all the way from sort of middle of September, um, and does look like we're in a sort of negative NAO sort of regime, um, which is encouraging for any cold weather in the Atlant in in Europe for the winter because of course an amplified -like jet stream means the higher chance of seeing a bit of blocking patterns uh, developing and northerly winds also the AO is negative so over the Arctic we have more higher pressure um, than sort of usual uh, or than we would expect now um, the AO is 
bit more complicated because if you think about it the arctic is sort of 360 degrees so we could have a lot of high pressure in the arctic but it's the other side of the north pole could be impacting siberia america so it is a bit more of a complex system but it's still generally got a negative ao so a lot of high pressure around potentially neg most negative nao we've had in sort of four months so very negative on these latest gfs ensembles um and that's very interesting seeing that come up so a lot of high pressure around a lot of blocking around for the uk though it is just getting generally going to be dry and chilly but if we do see these sort of patterns continue over the next four to six weeks we could start to be talking about some wintriness potentially towards the end of the November, especially for parts of Scotland, over the mountains of Scotland, maybe even over higher ground in Northern England, Wales. That is when we could start to potentially see some wintry mix in. Because at this stage, if we have a negative AO and negative NAO, if we do get the right synoptics to bring in cold air, the cold air really isn't there um, in the middle of October. Have given it sort of four to six weeks headed towards the end of November, we could start to see the potential for some colder conditions. So if you are looking forward to a colder winter, watching these indexes is very, very important. Um, and if these do remain negative over the next month or two, then we could be seeing something colder, um, or at least some colder spells um, late November into December as well. But they can flip very quickly. We can go into a very positive phase, um, sort of in a, a click of the fingers. So we'll have to see what happens. Um, but at this stage, it is encouraging. If we do have a look at the GM, which also reflects sort of the negative NAO and AO very well, you can see the high pressure building in at the moment. Bit of a northerly airflow, of course, a bit chilly with that. Still a lot of high pressure around. And again, still this sort of northerly airflow with the high pressure out in the North Atlantic, um, meaning chilly conditions kind of come in at times. But at the same time, we are still drawing up warmer air on the western side of the high. So it's where that these sort of air masses sort of position themselves. will decide how warm the uh, sort of dry weather is. Towards 240 hours, though, we do see a bit of low pressure starting to push in. You see the high pressure is migrating a bit further northwards towards some northern Canada and into Greenland, Iceland, and it's allowing low pressure to trundle in. And again, this is very encouraging signs for cold weather for the winter. Um, of course, as I said um, only a couple of minutes ago, we are still sort of four to six weeks uh, away from any wintry potential at all. Um, and even then, end of November, early December, mainly it will be over hills and mountains, low-lying areas really only have a chance of any colder conditions overnight potentially and if we do really pull in some real wintry synoptics um, which we'll just have to see if it does come off but at this stage it is reasonably encouraging so if you are a cold winter fan uh, and love seeing some snow it is encouraging it's better than if we had a lot of westerly raging which we've had plenty of over the last sort of five years so it's looking decent if we do look at the ecmwf you can see again a lot of high pressure around northerly airflows and right towards 240 hours we do see some big application in the jet stream high pressure up towards greenland we are starting to pull cold air down and you can see as i said when we do get one of these cold synoptic patterns there really isn't that much cold air there you can see we are drawing some cold air through but generally there isn't that much um, give it a month or two and these temperatures will be a good sort of five degrees probably colder at 850 hp if not a little bit colder than that um and right towards the end of the run, we do start to pull in westerly winds with more Atlantic, um, but still ridging of this high pressure up towards Greenland. So they're all still showing high pressure is going to be impacting the UK, either through northern blocking or directly sitting over the UK. And yeah, we're just going to have to see what really happens over the next few months. But at this stage, uh, over the next two weeks, it does look like generally high pressure is going to be in control um, with things looking generally quite dry at the moment though exactly whether it's going to be colder sort of high pressure or drier warmer high pressure it's still a little bit up in the air it's looking warm over the next few days next week with a bit of a cold northerly wind it looks like it's going to go a bit more chilly beyond that it still is a bit up in the air if we do have a look at the gfs ensembles now these are have only recently come out so they only go out um, about 10 11 days at this stage but you can see generally for london temperatures are around or below average over the next sort of week and then they dip above average once again into sort of the 10-day time frame 
but very, very minimal precipitation spikes, looking very, very dry, a few towards 16th to 19th of October, but at this stage, um, it really isn't significant at all. If you do look at the 6Z run to give us a bit of a perspective in the longer term, generally things are still around average at temperatures. More precipitation picking up on the 6Z run, but again, it is in the longer term and is subject to change, and you would expect there to be some precipitation runs um, as seeing sort of uh, 30 ensemble members having complete high pressure for 14 days is very, very unlikely um, in an ensemble run. So it is expected to see low pressure building in. If we do have a look at the sea level pressure, you can see high pressure is dominant. Over the next seven days, 1,030 millibars is very, very likely. Um, beyond that, dropping off a little bit, but of course that is being played by um, low pressure outliers within the ensembles. If we do have a look at Glasgow, um, just gives us an important perspective for northwards. You can see, again, high pressure is dominant, really. Um, 1,030 millibars, of course, again, dipping, of course, in the longer term, um, but that is, of course, expected on ensemble runs. If we look at the 850 HPA and precipitation, you can see, generally, very similar to London, quite warm at the moment, going a bit colder, and then generally turning um, around average or a bit warmer than average. Now, there is more precipitation because, of course, with the high pressure centred over towards England, Europe, we are going to at times see potentially some weather fronts or a few sort of unstable um, air masses move over Scotland uh, and to the north of the high pressure. So there's still the chance of a few showers, but it does generally look dry. It doesn't look like a massive deluge. The next couple of days, still rain around as we have that sort of convey about moisture and that weather front moving in from the west. Longer term, though, does look like precipitation may return. But as I said with London, it is expected to see um, some low pressure on some members in the longer term. Look at the 6Z. A lot more precipitation spikes right towards the end of the run. But as I said, again, it is expected. Um, and we'll have to see really what happens with the high pressure. So we do finish up having a look at the UK Met Office run. Have a look at precipitation. And then we'll have a look at temperature as well. You can see the conveyor belt of moisture. A lot of rain moving in. Heaviest rain probably tonight. Um, spreading eastwards. But sort of fizzling out as it comes up against the high pressure. Which of course is expected. And it should sort of fizzle away. By tomorrow evening, maybe some heavier patches of rain, some drizzle moving in through sort of the Midlands and Northern England before we just have generally a few showers in the north. Maybe some more persistent rain as we do see a weather front move in with that colder air through sort of Monday evening into Tuesday. But generally, nothing too major and it is looking generally quite dry. If we have a look at the temperatures, um, you can, can see today temperatures have been pretty decent, 20, 21 degrees. Um, was the high really in the Midlands um, and Southern England through tomorrow? Uh, temperatures is pretty decent um, once again, around six, sort of 17 18 degrees, a little bit chilly as we do have that weather front moving through, but still pretty decent. By sort of Sunday, we're going to be seeing temperatures once again 18 19 degrees in the south, but chillier in the north. We do start to pull in that cooler air by um, Monday afternoon. Uh, looking temperatures are a bit down, only 14, 15, maybe 16 degrees, and you can see really cold air, at least for this time of year, sort of 8, 9 degrees over the sea, um, moving in. And overnight Tuesday, you can see pretty chilly conditions, potentially quite a decent frost in Scotland, especially over the mountains, and sort of in frost hollows as well, as we do have temperatures dipping down to around freezing. And by Tuesday afternoon, pretty chilly indeed. Uh, many areas which are behind the weather front, maybe only 10, 11, 12 degrees, if not below that. Ahead of the weather front, maybe still 15, 16 degrees. And by Wednesday morning, sort of overnight, even areas in England and Wales could be dipping down into mid single digits. East Anglia, maybe only 5 or 6 degrees. Again, these lows at night all depend on sort of cloud amounts, um, um, but it still does look like we could be seeing some chillier nights next week. But it is looking generally high pressure, even if there are some chillier nights coming. I think most people would agree that it's sort of high, a high pressure, fine, um, and generally, and I mean generally, dry conditions um, are pretty decent for middle of October, as we have had it much worse over the last few years. Um, 
and I do suspect people should go out and enjoy um, the weather we do have. Um, as I keep saying this, um, dry and fine weather this time of year is sometimes really quite hard to come by. So do go out and enjoy. But anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you do. I'll see you again for another video soon.